guys thank you so much for taking your time to just watch our episodes today i'm in kitengela and i want to take you through one of the projects that we've been dealing with on this particular episode we picked it up from some contractor who had already messed our client we have done quite a number of things we have done with the floors we've done the kitchen the kitchen we've done a bar we've done the fireplace we've done shower cubicles we've done ceilings lighting and a number of other things it has not been finished completely we had phase one we did phase two and now the last phase that remains is furnishing and accessorizing the space and also putting the lights which will be done much later we decided to just show you up to where we have reached the biggest part of the project has been done so guys let me walk you in so that you can see what you've done on this side just come in. guys we are inside the building so this is the mudroom as i enter the house my mudroom uh, cabinetry are on my on my right if you remember the video we took earlier there was nothing here all the cables that are feeding this house in terms of uh, cctv in terms of electricals and uh, security alarm system were passing here. There was a beam behind here, so we had to demolish and create this cabinetry. In uh, the purpose of this is mainly as you walk into the house, as you want to go into the pantry to drop your thing off the, the parking, you want to, to come and hang your coat here or your trench coat, and probably maybe some of the keys that are feeding maybe the pantry or wherever you pick them from here. Then under here we can have a place to put your shoes and maybe gut boots. Then you can have your foldables around here. And purposely the intention here is to get things rightly done. When we came in there were cabinets here, but they were poorly done in terms of line works. That is finishes in terms of the background nothing looked appealing so we had to bring them down and also do it in a manner that is also visually appealing so we had a, a one of the cabinets done like this slightly recessed and then one of the cabinet coming out uh, by around 50 millimeter thick and then you provide more storage for things that you can just place and also maybe some artifacts around here and that is it also around this particular area there were some gypsum works some walls, some of the walls had not been done properly most of the walls actually had not been done properly so we had to skin the entire house sand and then paint in three coats of silk paint to ensure that the finishes from the cabinetry to the doors to the floors are matching so that one item does not look nice and the other item looks and finished then from there if you also can picture properly or go back to our our first video this place we had done demolition we were actually in that phase where we were doing the civil works so it had been plastered and initially there were frames on this in this in the house where they were meant to be and they were not properly sanded the wooden sub, wooden frames supplied were not properly seasoned so everything was warping and the finishes were not looking nice and whatever we were doing in the house would not have married to each other so we decided to also pull them down and bring these beautiful frames that actually are fitting into the pockets that is from end to end of the provided space for the frame and again uh, if you look at the frame it is really well polished and uh, normally what we do when we are doing the supply of frames and doors we do our polishing out of sight and then by the time this frame come here they are well done well polished sanded and uh, they have their varnish on top so we just install and if you see even from top all the way to bottom you will not see a place we have screwed so we normally don't even use screws or nails on our frames we only provide a pocket whereby we leave 10 millimeters on either side and we use the PU glue to mount our frames and then we finish it nicely with an architrave and we normally try as much as we can to do the architraves on either sides and that is it for the mudroom so immediately after the mudroom this is the door to the garage then the door to the dobby if you just check maybe before I even uh, go so far which maybe I uh, might avoid to repeat. Look at this door and look at the doors that had been supplied before. Just a simple design. 
If you look at the corners from that end to this end, that would be roughly around 800 millimeters. If you look at the same thing from there to there, it's 800 millimeters. If you look at the gaps that we leave around the, the edges where the door is, when you have shut the door, the line work is uh, probably 20, let's say, two millimeters all the way down and it will be the same line all the way down the same thing all the way this side it is holding tightly onto the frame and then the finishing of the frame also looks nice the door panel also the finishing looks nice the paneling very simple straightforward and this door was well seasoned well sanded well polished and the overall look in terms of supply installation and fitting just looks pretty nice and that is it for that uh, area i will take you into the dobby so that uh, you see so guys this is the dobby my door is there nice handle and then as you can remember from the previous video uh we rearranged and then came in with this nice beautiful quartz tone that is uh, done with a double lipping all the way around and the cabinetry also done in a nice way in the shaker, in shaker, in shaker, shaker doors. These are shaker doors. That is the design of the of the panels for all the wardrobes and all the cabinetry in this house, both from the kitchen to all the wardrobes. That is the same concept we are using. And then uh, this is storage for prob probably uh, uh, detergents and uh, anything that you will be using around this area and then now we provided this surface all the way to the other side this is the dry area which you can actually use for ironing and all that then you use this for storage the backsplash which is normally 600 millimeter high we decided we are not tiling because this is no longer a wet area because we have provided for, for the wash and dry machine under here which all of them have fitted nicely and then so immediately after that it is dried you can come and iron from here then we will provide a nice honey hook here so that if i told you you're working around here you can hook your things there so basically for the wet area provision we just done a nice beautiful 100 mm thick 100 mm high backsplash that runs all around so that we have our clean walls so that the entire look of the house does not look so much congested with so much tiles around and that is it for this particular space i'm excited to take you through our kitchen it came out so nicely and in normal cases when we are given these uh, projects for interior design mostly the kitchen is the key thing because it belongs to the madam of the house so if you go wrong there you've gone wrong everywhere so let me take you through this so from here you remember as we were shooting the first video this thing was just uh, i think there were pieces of boards here and uh, everything was just looking like it is not but from now let me take you step by step how we build it up so as i told you shaker doors all the way then we started here with a, a space that is 950 inside to inside or 1050 outside to outside for our double fridge and also we had to provide provision for water so that in the event our client wants to dispense or to have a fridge with a dispenser for water they can also have it so that provision is already provided the fridge currently does not serve that function but we have done that apart from that we normally also provide more storage on top of the fridge and if you remember this point this house has beams around this area so so many of them that uh, we actually fought to just make sure that all things are balancing so this is a bulkhead a false gypsum reason for doing that is because of the bucket the beams that are behind me so we had to bring these ones down so that all our kitchen heights are the same so we did that and then we left just a smaller piece here so a smaller piece of around 100 mm so that our kitchen or our kitchen cabinet does not just go straight and hit the hit the gypsum or hit the the, the beam so that in the event you want to open the whatever it is not touching the gypsum exactly immediately after that we have this compartment this compartment carries the microwave 
in the oven. This is 349 and this is 600, and 600 by 600. All the electrical points have been provided behind, fitted and nicely concealed so that by the time you come with your microwave and your oven, the, 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 the sockets are behind. But we also do not forget that in the event of any accident and you want to switch it on or off immediately, you do not have to struggle to pull this one out. We have done provision in such a way that in the event you want to operate that, you just come here, you switch it on, and that will go on. As you can see, this has now come on. Then if I want to switch it off, again, I just come here and I switch it off. And the same thing applies to all the appliances in the kitchen. You have to provide DP switches for control purposes. Immediately after that, so when you're doing a kitchen, we are also calculating, it's a lot of mathematics. We have provided for the two cab cabinetry, that is for the double, double door fridge in the oven and microwave, which also has provision for more storage under and more storage on top. All our drawers are soft closing. Then we remained with a space that was just immediately after the oven and microwave. We decided to provide a tall cabinet which can provide now more storage for any other uh, utensils or whatever. Then because we have a compartment here for, for, the, for the cooker, we have provided open cabinetry here so that if you have any, any things like uh, like uh, the items you use on a daily basis when you're cooking, those are those are like salt and uh, curry and I don't know they're called. You can place them here, sugar and all that. You can put them there and you can easily access them and uh, in jars. So you just pick, you put, and 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 that is it for that. Then for that reason, this cabinet or this compartment normally is. 900 mm, 900 mm, and we've also provided the drawers of 900 mm. Purposely, if you're cooking around here, you can pull and close and pick your cooking sticks and pick your items that you are using down here. But this one is permanently fixed, normally because the electrical points around that point that are servicing this item. Then immediately on top, 600 mm, uh, we have the backsplash and then we leave 200 and then we hang our our hood so that whenever you're cooking here and uh, steam is coming through this thing can just suck your steam nicely and to avoid it from uh, going all the way to the to the house then for this particular kitchen we provided a water point here so my client wanted a water point here because um, where he is right now, which I think it's abroad, they normally have this, this kind of service whereby there is a tap around here so that when you are doing your cooking, you don't have to run and go out or go somewhere maybe at the sink and fetch. You, this is an arm-like an arm -like tap which folds, it's a foldable tap. You fold it and you pull it. When you're cooking, maybe you want to add water in your in your, in your your kale or in your skooma or in your spinach. Just pull it like this, you put, switch it on, you pour it and then you close, switch it back. Then you can pull it to this side, pull it to this side or pull it at the center. So it's a folding type of tap. But uh, without forgetting most of the accessories, this is our phase two that we have just finished. Our phase three starts with electrical fit outs and furniture arrangement and a few other stuffs like now these ones, which are in the container, the client has already sent them and we are waiting so that we start assembling them. Then from there, if you look around, maybe when you're looking at our videos, maybe what, what we do, we normally come into a site and we find our clients have already done some sockets with, with their contractors and everything just is not arrayed or someone doesn't have a clue of what they are doing. So they've just put socket, socket switches and all that, but they do not know what is the purpose because probably someone has told them, just provide as many as possible. And then you will also realize that things are not aligned. So we come in, we rearrange all our switches, all our sockets with intentions or with a purpose. So if you are here, you'll find that this is either serving this, this one is serving the hood, another one is having the, the oven or the microwave and all of them have been aligned nicely 
And because now we come in probably when the, the, the pockets for the sockets or the switches have been provided on the wall, we do away with that. And once we come in with the stone, like right now we've done the top in quotes and the backsplash is also in quotes. We remove that socket and we cut our pockets for the sockets nicely on top of the quotes and we fit it nicely to fit nicely on the on, on top of the whatever of the stone and you will never see maybe any rough cuttings around and everything is lined nicely and the, if you look from all the way from the other side to this side all these things are on one line so we put our levels to just ensure that things are properly done after that there's that compartment that is more storage. We had a challenge here. This window was lower here. So we just, after laying the, 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 the stone, that is the quartz stone, we decided to have this panel, this one, one, one of this uh, piece, slightly raised so that if, because this is a wet area, you don't, uh, when the water splashes here, it doesn't have to go all the way to that side. And this was just creativity that we came about. Then again, because of the, of uh, your cooking here and it's at night, we decided to go with the Roman type of curtain, whereby it's easy, you just pull it like this, you close, and maybe probably when you want to open, it's easily pulled up and you draw it up like that. Then again, another thing, we supply you with a very beautiful, uh, deep, a double bowl type of sink. This is proper stainless steel, nicely done with a pull type of tap, whereby if you want to wherever, you just pull it nicely and you can even use it to wash around here nicely. Or if you want to do things, you can easily pull it and use it. It's a mixer. So under it, we've also provided uh, more provision, electrical provision, whereby if you want to put an under sink, if you don't have provision for, for solar or whatever, or solar water system, you can easily just uh, operate it from here. So it is well uh, 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 mounted. If you look at the edging, nicely fitting, nicely on top of the, of the stone, and it leaves no gap for eventualities of water seeping through. After that, we are still on the line of the wet areas. We have supplied or provided more uh, climbing points that is a uh, feeder uh, a feeder for, for the for the for the for the dishwasher so immediately after that we provide a compartment which is 600 mm wide for a dishwasher again the provisions for operating it are here and the provision also for operating the we have another big oven under on the island and a, and a, a, a glass induction whatever plate there it, they are all operated from this particular thing that you can close. Then we also provide you with more sockets in the event. You have a, a, maybe a coffee machine, or you have a blender, or you have anything, or you have a toaster, you can still use that. Then as you check around, this kitchen was in a it was in a, in a, in a shed. And we had to fight because these are angles that you have to get. Right, because uh, during the construction, probably the person who was doing it didn't get the corners right. So if this was 900 or this was 700, all those edges were meant to be like that. But as usual, the, that is now the work of a creative mind to play around so that even the client will not notice that there was a struggle. But you realize that it is 750 at this corner. Maybe probably it is 900 at that corner. But as you look at the overall outcome, everything must be properly fitted. So from there, I come to my island, my beautiful island, which is nine, which is I think, this is one meter wide. Reason for doing that is because my client wanted stools, low level stools on this counter, whereby if they are working around here, they can sit on that other side. We do 900 for provision for purposes of having more space seated on that side. And on this side, because the, someone is cooking from this side, you provide cabinetry on the on the front side. And this cabinet will normally be either 600 or 500, so that if you have to store things and uh, whatever you're bringing the rails, they're fitting nicely. And on this side, you have now racks like these ones for, for the spice rack. This is a spice rack for spices. You can put your spices here. Then it's still soft closing and more 
uh, provision for that. And immediately after that, I have my big oven, which I've also powered nicely, and I've provided the operation or the DP switch for operating it on the other side. Then on top of it, I have my beautiful induction uh, cooker, cooker plate which here now, if you're doing your light cooking, you just, or die light warming, you can work from here as people are seated on that side. Then immediately after that, I give you more provision for what? For more drawers in soft clothes. And remember when I was shooting, I told you guys that uh, we have this particular panel, which is 100 mm immediately after the cabinet on either side, on that side and on this side. And this particular panel is longer than the than the cabinet. It's, I think, almost a meter or 900 and, 975, purposely to hold the, the, the stool on top. So it extends all the way to this side as the cabinet reaches here. This one extends on this other side so that we can use this to hold our stool on top. And as usual, I was telling you, someone can come with stools. We have provided more, more leg room. So it is 300 millimeter deep. So someone can sit here comfortably without struggling. And then we've done it in a shaker finish. The panels behind a shaker finish. And uh, this makes this panel, this side, to look finished and to resemble the, the doors that we have also provided. And that is it for the for this kitchen. Let me take you to the pantry. So before I go in, let me just talk about this particular door. This door is made out of mahogany, first of all. Secondly, we have done it in louvered type. This is a louvered type of door. The reason for doing that is just for aeration purposes so that whatever you're storing there, air can move in nicely and air can also still nicely move out or easily move in and easily move out. And the doors also, some people would compromise and say, ah, because it's a pantry, let's just provide any type of door. For this particular site, each and every door has been done to specifications. And that is mahogany, well sanded, polished and supplied and fitted by professional uh, laborers. So, let's move in. So, as I move in, another thing that we have, we actually doing for our client is to give you a pantry that is functional, first of all, but without forgetting the aspect of the aesthetic purposes. So, in this particular space, it is a very small space, but we've done it in a very creative way so that the overall look is really nice, first of all, but also functional in a way. So what we've done here, we've done also a counter, just like the way we've done it in the kitchen. We also, in this particular project, we are avoiding a lot of tiles on the walls. So our backsplash is also just trimmed in an 100 mm or 4 inch size of uh, quotes and we have used quotes for this particular area um, almost everywhere on this side and it uh, we actually also minimizing on different type, types of colors so we have used the same type all through so you have a, a worktop you can have you can actually come here and work from here we have we have provided you with the sockets and switches on the back on the back on the, on the backsplash then below the counter what we've done we've just given you most spaces for storing and this is for drawers whereby you can arrange your things here maybe whatever you have in the kitchen that is not enough or anything that you're not using there often you can come and put it there. Immediately on the lower end, we've given you open spaces. If you have any sacks, you have any big whatever, maybe baskets, and you've put your anguache or your sweet potatoes, you can come and put them there and they will fit nicely and we have more spaces on the underside. Then immediately on the upper levels, we have also given you more space. You have bread in the bread basket, you can come and put here, arrange your things nicely here, nice, nicely here. So that even if you had a visitor or a gay, any person coming in and you are maybe having a chat, you can comfortably enter here, open, pick your things, and even if you left the door and people are there, it is still beautifully looking. Then we give you more storage all the way so you can store things 
that are not actually picked on a daily basis and lock them up. Then as I get out, we also give you a tall cabinet. This tall cabinet is all open from floor level all the way to the ceiling levels so that you can have your nicely done baskets with things inside arranged from whatever you use oftenly to the things that you pick on a daily basis and then the things that you don't pick daily on the upper level we also have done nicely our walls have done have been skimmed nicely sanded and polished not because this is a pantry and they assume it's a dirty area and just leave it everything has done, been done to precision and that is all for the pantry let me take you to our small bar area another entity connected to the kitchen so that i can show you what we've done for there let's go so guys from the pantry uh, let me show you our small bar area. So we came up with this space. I think it was there in the design, in the, in the architectural drawing. So we decided to make it a small bar area, and that is a, a small a small cabinetry. And this is still being done. We, we still did it just like the way we've done the kitchen only that now the depth is slightly smaller as compared to the kitchen which is 600 mm deep this is roughly around 450 then we provide a cabinetry one on the left purposely for storage then one in the middle to provide for the wine chiller and then one to the right for purposes of if you want to wash or you want to prepare or maybe just clean up maybe the wine glasses or the whiskey glasses you can easily work from here under it as you know very well this is a compartment specifically for the pipe works and then we also give you something that is beautiful look at this something just elegant something that matches what you're designing for your client so we give you something like that one ball one one ball one um ball sink deep enough stainless steel well done if you look at the the, the stonework double leaping one single uh, skirting on the on the on the on the sides that is on the right hand side and the right on the left hand side but we go now because this area is a wet area we decided to go with a backsplash all the way from the top 600 millimeters high to the high level cabinets then we provided high level cabinets with a glass door so that whatever you're storing here you can comfortably or easily see what you have you can tell these are wine glasses these are whiskey glasses these are my cognac cognac it's called cognac this is cognac and that is uh, that is whatever that is there then when we came in there is this beam as in this particular project, there are so many beams on the ground floor. So there was this beam running here, and there's this beam running here, and the beams in the kitchen. So this particular part that is here, because now you cannot run a cabinet from here all the way to the top, then when you come here, the cabinet is shorter. We decided to build up a small cabinet beam here, which is a false beam out of gypsum, so that our cabinets, and this has actually also dictated the heights at the at the kitchen so that when you are standing in this particular area and you are looking to the kitchen side each and everything is on the same at the same height so all the cabinets are at around 200 to 2450 so it is the same thing all the way to the other side so this is how we did it on the inner side that is how it looks we have our our panel on top that separates the ceiling level and the cabinet level and then now below it we have our backsplash our top and then cabinets under and that is it for our small bar so whenever you are here you you, you pick your wine you pick it then you go to there to the counter where that is where the island is or you can comfortably come and walk to this side whereby we will have Two small armchairs around here. You sit here, you have your drink comfortably, comfortably with your madam or with your brother or with your sister and enjoy each and every bit of it. We have provided uh, this space purposely as our, our wine cellar area. So this uh, this cellar whatever were unit we have done them in metal structure which is a, a quarter by a quarter then we've done this thing in such a way that your bottle can sit on this side and the neck can rest on the other side and we've done our calculation in such a way that the heights in between 
are 250 all through. Then this thing was a bit of a challenge. At first when we did, we were doing this, we just did these tumors knowing that they're on the same height. Then when we came to install, we noticed a bit of a challenge in terms of line work. So we had to reconstruct and make sure that the levels, when you put your bottles from, all the, from that side, all the way to this side, they are seated on one level. That is one line all through. So that they're all leveled. Then uh, we restructured and remember, we had uh, come up with this wall. This wall was not there. The staircase was just here. So we came up with this wall to block purposely to have something under this staircase instead of you sitting on this side and seeing the lounge area straight away. Then after doing the walling, we decided to clad the background of this space with our beautiful coral stone. And as usual, we don't just come with coral stone and throw them on the wall or just lay them in any way we come up sit down with our designers come up with a pattern that it's not again too much or too simple so we we decided to come up with this pattern whereby some are just standing vertical some are standing horizontal and a piece in between just as simple as that then after that we don't even we, we didn't even do the grouting in the joints we left them we left them like that purposely so that we don't interfere with the look of the stone. Then immediately after that, there is something most people forget. It is the treatment on the stone. You have to apply a transil. And again, we don't apply transil in form of uh, varnish. We apply it in form of matte finish so that we still maintain our stone look. So that uh, uh, if you apply the varnish, the this, the glossy type, then the look of the stone loses its natural f finish and it looks something else and that is not our intention. So we applied the matte finish so that the chipping on the stone, when you touch it, they don't drop on the floor. It holds it back and also if, uh, prevents dust from collecting around this area. Also one thing in the, in the consignment is the lighting. So we have this spotlight that will be here, a nice wall hanging around there. We have that that spotlight so imagine it's in the evening you're just seated here and there is a nice incandescent warm light shining from this particular point and another one there and that's just the two of you here having a word this is a piece that I really admire and I would want to see also personally once the the, the, seat, the seats and the lighting have been done we had a proposal of putting a nice beautiful uh, frameless glass partition around here just to shield the kids around but we decided with our client that why not our kids don't even also sometimes when you're looking things so much kids become curious and they want to throw their eyes or they want to whatever why not leave it and see what comes by so we did away with the frameless so this place will just be as open as it is for now then immediately after this this is another open area this is where the dining area is so our nice mat at a dining table and then a beautiful chandelier and if you can see from here all the way on top our nicely done gypsum ceiling with spotlights on each and every every spot then our beautiful uh, curtain flowing all the way from the ceiling all the way to the floor so this is sim simple but very elegant by the time all the furniture have been put in place. This place is going to be one of the most beautiful. Our walls nicely done. If you looked in the first video, we were doing the skimming and the sanding. It has been done. We have done our beautiful when squatting on the other side, whereby now our artworks will come on that area. We've sanded our staircase, polished. I will show you as I go up. Let's go to the lounge. Before I go into the lounge, let me show you this wall. This is the space that uh, feeds the staircase from the other side. It lands around that particular point. So this place also was open. We decided why. We looked at the end product during the design stage and we thought we should have a nice beautiful console around here because uh, we shielded this. This is a wall that we came up with so that they can have a nice wall hanging and a console well sanded, polished, sand, sanded and painted nicely to receive a console so that we do not leave this space bare. And that is just as simple as that for that particular area. Let's go to the lounge.
So guys, this is the lounge. I will not waste so much of your time because not so much was done here apart from the skimming and, and sanding and painting of the walls. We've done our beautiful curtains that flow all the way from the ceiling, that is a double volume ceiling, all the way to the floor. Shears nicely done. And then my most uh, admirable space in this space is actually the front part of the house the, of the of the of the room which is the focal point of this house you remember when we were shooting the first video i told you guys we had to adjust this fireplace was here actually it started from here all the way to somewhere here and that meant that the space on my right was bigger than the space on the left so what we did we had to reconstruct and make this fireplace sit in the middle and uh, if you check properly this particular part is hollow we had to do it out of boards so that we don't have too much civil works going around here but on the lower side we had to cast and do stonework and also do a nice beam around it so that it is it sits nicely on the floor and it serves its purpose then uh, immediately after that now we do our cabling and our piping on the upper level if you looked at this uh, double volume wall we didn't have that spotlight on the right and that spotlight on the left and we thought now at the, as the end product when you are seated here all your furniture have been arranged nicely we have this piece here and the piece on the left why not have a wall hanging on the right and the wall hanging on the left and once you have the wall hanging on the right and the left how do you actually lit, light it? We decided to provide now a, uh, a spotlight up there so that at night it's also a warm light just shining on the artworks. Again, immediately after that, we decided to come up with this cabinetry where we have now low level storage and a display unit on the higher level seated on top of the cabinet. The cabinet itself is 450 millimeter deep. And then 300, this, uh, the top level cabinet is around uh, 250, just for purposes of displaying your beautiful things and maybe your, 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 your photos. Then immediately after that, what we did, we also came up with this false wall. This false wall came as, as a result of, we wanted to mirror the left and the right so that we have things looking the same both on either sides. If you look on the, on the left side, we had that beam, that column that was running from floor level to the top. It's roughly around 850, let's say one meter or 900. So we did the same thing on this side. And we thought instead of just leaving it go all the way down, we provided this space whereby it goes off. Fire, our fireplace is a natural fireplace whereby our client will be using firewood. So we provided this space for storage of firewood. And if you check nicely, again under there, we have provided a flute or a pipe that uh, takes air outside. And uh, so that uh, when we put our fireplace here, which is also an item that is coming, when we fit it, it will actually come and fit nicely on this edging around and this is not an electric fireplace but it is a kuni or wood fireplace but it is lockable with glass and in that event now when you're burning uh, your wood uh, the smoke that comes out of this fireplace it does doesn't come to this side but through that hole that we provided it's it's, it sucks its uh, smoke all the way and it takes it outside so that the, the environment inside is eco-friendly. Then immediately after that, there was this piece, which is the mantelpiece. As usual, guys, anytime I meet a kitchen in my design, my heart sparks. Anytime I meet uh, a, a, sp a space with a fireplace, my heart sparks. So when I just know that I will have to design a fireplace. So immediately after now reconstructing the entire thing and I had my design in place and the client had approved, but it was a flat panel all around. Then during the design or the, during the installation process, I sit down again 
and I'm thinking alone, and I thought, no, that piece might not come out nicely. Then I sit down with my team, and we redesigned this thing again, and we came up with these pieces. And these pieces were just so hard for us to install, or so hard for us to mount them. But it took us time for us to just have this piece and this piece aligned around, because it's roughly around 20 millimeter deep, and you cannot mount a stone, or you cannot cut a 20 mm thick, a stone and mount it on the other. So we had to create this whatever and source for a special glue that now we are using to mount. And then now this piece, the inner piece and the middle piece and the outer piece just gave this mantelpiece a character. And then as usual, we don't drop it all the way to the floor. We make for you a threshold or a scutting so that everything is slightly raised. And then immediately after that, I recess inside by around 160. And then I put this uh, marble, again, marble stone around. Then this thing, when now you are mounting your fireplace, it sits slightly on top and it's also almost at the level of people seated so that the fire is really coming straight onto your onto your onto your face then this stone is actually marble some people will call and tell tell us please how much is the tile that you are using on the on your on your mantelpiece this is not a tile this is marble and that's why it flows all the way to the other side and if you can see we've just cut at 45 so that our joints are nicely done and if you check even on the top we have an aging and it flows all the way so no gaps in between and we decided to go with marble purposely to maintain the look and the standards because our client wanted a very high end type of finish or high end type of a uh, a fireplace and then immediately after that we decided to clad the top this was all concrete all the way so it was meant to be either the same color on the side the same color on this side was supposed to be one but we decided to clad it nicely with the with the, with the with the panels all the way then we had a trim around it and this we actually did in design first before doing it in practical. So immediately after that, we have this compartment that is exactly the same compartment on the other side. Nicely done cabinet with those storage under a small top on top, which is also double leaping. More cabinets around on the upper levels. These are just deep display unit. Then if you can see also the trimming on the upper side, we don't just leave it like that. We come with a nice beautiful cornice put on top, and don't do it in the same same color that is there and that is it for the lounge now what remains is to put the furniture in place have our chandelier on top which i will actually show you once all that has been done let's go to the bedrooms so guys we are inside the master we have a very small nook as you enter the master immediately after the door we had proposed now the space has been done we, we need to have an armchair on this side and an armchair on the left and then a wall hanging behind me. So there will be an art, artwork here and some armchairs on this. Then immediately here we'll just have a small simple console and still an artwork. You remember the, f the, the first video? This space was not here. There was a pipe that was running around here that feeds, that is taking air from the washroom that is behind me in this bedroom all the way to the outside. We decided to conceal it. Initially, when the other contractor had finished, it had not been concealed. So it, when you see this false beam here, that is its purpose. Again, this arch was here. It had not been completed. It was finished. And this is how it looks. And then as I enter into the master, what we did, we did the flows. The ceiling was already there. You remember where, what I was telling you initially? There was an issue around this point. The ceiling had been done, but the guy didn't provide space for the curtain. We had to cut the ceiling, run the cornice on the top. They provide space for the, for the curtain rods inside, which is concealed. And we also supply the curtains nicely done with the shears. So this was scattered for, and right now it looks nice. And we had to repair the ceiling nicely in such a way that uh, actually it complements what is on the other side. Then immediately after that, we did this headboard area. We had to center the lights nicely. This is centered on that side so that the bed sits immediately here. 
and they are sleep facing the other side. And then we had to come in with this beautiful, special textured wall finish, which has just come out very nicely and echoes what we had proposed for our client in the design. Look at the finish, look at the texture. This is just something that uh, really looks so nice. Someone might think maybe it's a wallpaper, but it's not wallpaper. This is a textured wall finish. Textured wall finish, for those people who do not know, it is a paste. Some are paste, some are oil, but this is a paste mixed with water and it is not oil based, it is water based. So it does not even affect you in terms of uh, smell and all that. And the application method is the only tricky thing because it's an, a, a piece of art done specifically by special teams and uh, if you look at it once the bed has been put in place our rugs and our, our chairs around here and maybe an artwork on top this thing will just make this front side or the focal part of the bedroom to come out in a wow format that is it for this master bedroom let me take you to the master walk-in closet so that we see what we did for this space in the closets let's go so guys i walk into the walk-in closet and immediately in this walk-in closet we have this space here you remember in the first video this space was really in a mess at that time everything looked just ah so we came with this on this particular wall we just wanted to add on this space so that it looks like something and we actually really got it after the painting and plastering of the walls and making the walls fine we came up with this niche whereby you can just put your things here that you use inside and we tried to trim the edges 100 mm wide with this beautiful natural coral stone then inside we had to put in and uh, put in a nice stone all the way from top to bottom and carve it nicely all the way to this side and trim it on the side and this is quartz on the inner side and everything just looks nice and well done we can do much better there because as i stand here i am just actually just developing new ideas but ideas normally come in each and every time you're doing something then immediately after that we have this space where we have provided the plumbing works for the for the for the bathtub or for the jacuzzi so it will be standing there for this person when you are here and you're just seated here you just lie here probably open your windows and look into the garden then immediately after that on my far end as you are see as you are, as you are, as you are lying down there also we have this space that has been nicely done very elegant simple and straightforward nothing complicated well trimmed a pocket you can put your things there and it is as simple as that nothing too much the floor is tiles the walls are just painted and maybe in other cases someone would have just thought of putting tiles all around but what for this is the only wet area and you're not splashing your water all the way to the other side so that is enough for tile works and the rest of the walls we leave them as plain as possible i remember when I was shooting the video, there was a pipe that was again running around here. These are the tricks that we go through and these are the things that we do for our clients. Instead of the pipe just hanging there and we were like, now the frames are all at this height, what do we do? We just cut our, our architrave slightly and then made this frame to fit in nicely and we ran our gypsum bucket around here and right now as you look at it you might think this was the initial concept or this is a beam that really existed but it is not this this beam is actually the feeder for the for the beam that i was talking about on the other side and it is channeling the air from the other toilet all the way outside because the other toilet is in between the house in between the walls it is it doesn't have a, a window but uh there's a there's a there's a there's an appliance you just come and feed in and you plug it into power the minute you open your door it sucks the air and sends it outside so even next time you have a toilet that is in the middle of the of the room do not struggle we will come and sort you out and in this bathroom 
we have the his and the hers. So we have already provided a sink and a drawer here for them for storage. Then um, with a with a quad stop, a beautiful mirror, and then a mixer nicely done, and a shaving unit. And that is it. Beautiful frame. Then we've also supplied some nice beautiful frameless glass for the shower cubicle whereby you can slide it nicely like that and all these are trimmed in stainless steel and we have our rubber trimming so that whenever you are pulling it and it hits on that side it's not banging like bang it stops nicely and it also has an overlap so that when you're showering and water is spilling it does not have to spill outside from there i take you into the walk-in closets and uh, we did a separation whereby we've done our nice beautiful frameless glass with uh trimmed with our mahogany frame with architrave on either side with a lock so that in the event you have your safe on this side you can lock your things in nicely so when you're walking here it's an open kind of uh, arrangement whereby the only places that are locked or closed are the drawers but even not permanently closed or or, or closed the solid uh, panel so our panels our front panels are made in frame in a in a tough and glass these panels we customized all this and spray painted nicely and then we had to place the glass the panel inside you look at the aging well done so that uh, for security purposes or for safety purposes they do not cut you or while handling the same thing on the lower side done nicely so that you can arrange whatever you arrange them you can easily see then the lower compartment has been left so that when we come with the shoe racks we can just place them in there then you arrange your things then on the upper levels we have provided the chrome pipes for hanging your clothes or your shirts up there then on the left here on the right hand side we have this tall unit where by now if you have trench coats or we have the big whatever or the dresses you can have them there then we provided these for you hanging those are short short clothes or short dresses and then more on the lower side up and lower then all the way to the other side then we had more space remaining we decided to provide this console in the middle and have it with a glass on top so that whatever you have when you're doing the jewelries that is the watches and whatever the ties and whatever you can easily see them from the top then you just draw your cabinet uh, like this and then pull it pick and then take it back that is it for that for that drum and the same thing happens on that side and that side is also very nicely done and then this glass was customized it's a 10 millimeter thick well polished and toughened so that we place it on top and it's clear so that you can easily see the thing so this is movable anytime you can move it but we placed it at the center so that by the time now we are hanging our lights and the light is up there flowing it just in the middle it shines inside then as during the design we also provided for for this poof so you are here you have taken your things you can easily pick your maybe a shoe here or anything here or you want to read your sms you can just sit here nicely and you've dressed and reply to your messages or reply to your text and uh, also just calm down or think or meditate before you go out and all this has been customized the drawer for more storage the space for more storage and then here you can easily sit or even sit and look outside and look at the gate and uh, just think in other rooms it will be more or less a repetition of the same because this bedroom more or less look the same i will not so much waste your time explaining the same same things probably i just throw a shot inside then move into another space so let's go to the study room so that i show you how we treat studies inside houses so that we see how we did it specifically for this particular house so let's walk in before i go into this 
office or the study room upstairs. Let me talk about these stairs. Look at the way these stairs has been done. Look at the, at the at the corner pieces. These are called the king posts. Well done. I come to sites at times and I find uh, maybe a chuma has been provided and it flows all the way. I will remove and put this in metal or put it in wood. So depending on the theme or the style. So this is a key thing to adorn your stairs to make sure that your stairs has a, char a character. And then the first step also should be deep enough so that you can even walk on it. You can also treat it from, from the side so that it's not just from from the step all the way. So these are treatments that we do on the staircase. Again, when we are doing the floors, we sand the floor nicely and polish and have our wooden panels going all the way. And we try as much as we can. If the step is 320 we maintain the steps all the way to the other side in most cases you come to the site and you find one step is 300 another one is 280 and another one is 400 and another one is 245 normally what we do we cut them or we add uh, flesh on it so that we have all our steps the same size and all the risers if it's if a riser is 150 we make sure all the risers are 150 and as usual we will also allow a 20 millimeter overlap from this from the from the riser so that you have your step not just meeting the riser on the edge immediately then even on the step for purposes of safety we also provide our steps with a groove so that when you're walking you don't slide out. So that is it for this staircase. Let me take you to our office and I show you what we've done for that office. Let's go guys. So guys from the ground floor you land at this particular point and uh, we actually also thought to have this wind coating done in double in double layer and then uh, what will happen here we will have a console around this point and a wall hanging on this particular wall at this particular point and that is as simple as that as you learn that is the only feature that you see then we have a door to the to the to the right and a door to the to the left this leads to bedroom one and the other one is bedroom two bedroom two i will not waste my time to go inside because it's more or less the same it's the same explanation but i will give you shots of the same spaces so let me take you to the other side then as you are here as you're walking into the into the office and the other bedrooms on this side look at the way the trimming these are handrails nicely done at 900 mm millimeter high from the floor level well trimmed so that when you are here you can actually talk to the person seated in the lounge and also you don't even get bored there's that beautiful view as you are walking into the office or to the other bedrooms look at the paneling look at the fireplace it is just all magnificent look at the ceiling the way it's looking both on the left and also on the right where we have our dining so let's go to the office so guys this is another beautiful space that i am happy about the outcome was just to the point so we came in cabinets had been done everything had been done in this space but it was not looking to the point so we had to demolish again and redesign and now build it up in our style and if you look at it we have done our beautiful wet coating around here so that we provide a spotlight at this point a nice wall hanging on, in the middle of this thing then on the front side so my client sits on that side facing this side so that if he has a desk on that side there would be a 86 inch or 85 inch TV here so that in the event he has this news or he wants to watch something he can comfortably watch his things on this side then behind where he sits there is also another unit exactly the same size the same design with a tv that is purposely for cctv so the concept again for this house everything has been uh, spray painted in metallic matte finish then the cabinetry on this side the same design that we did on this side we have done the same design on that side then adorned the upper level with more storage and this is not actually basically not storage it is more more of a display units then our gypsum runs around then 
my window, I'm gonna treat it with a, a Roman curtain. And then from there, we did uh, the floors, which look at the way the floor is done, beautifully seated, and then I was cutting around the house, is still in white, and this is the same concept in all the rooms. A white cutting, a dark bamboo floor, then light walls, and then cabinetry, which are slightly dark then simple curtains on the side. And that is it for this side. Let me show you this other side so that we see how it looks. As I walk in, so I was telling you we are going to have a Roman blind here. And then the same, same concept that is on the front side is the same concept that we are having on the back side. So what will happen, we are having our desk seated here, facing that side. So he's watching his TV if need be, or throw an eye on the screen if need be. But on the back side, there is this provision whereby now he will put another TV here, and then this now serves as the CCTV TV for him. Then more storage, when he's working here, he can store all his files, he can store anything that he has, then he can have. We have one compartment for the safe, and then again more display, on the front on the on the back side as he sits here he can have his trophies he can have his portraits around the family things and then more top if just sometimes you are here and you want to pull a chair you can pull and you have your laptop on this side you can still continue and do things then you can have even a printer in a printer on this on this surface and that is it for this particular space so guys this upper floor has uh, four bedrooms plus an office i'll just touch i'll just touch on this bedroom and then the other ones i'll throw shots so a beautiful door as you enter with a nice lock then immediately after that, we have a door that leads into one of the sh shower room. And in this shower, we have uh, um, uh, we have the cabinet that is the vanity with its wa wa wash and basin and a mirror on the front side. Then shower cubicles here in this particular one. This is what we did for for this shower cubicle, whereby the sliding doors are meeting at the center of the of the room. So I can slide them like this. Then they meet here as I shower I close them like that and when I want to come in I open them like that and my uh, mixer is on the wall there and the uh, whatever the shower head is on that side then on the f immediately after that I have my toilet on this other side which is just a small space of roughly 600 mm or 750 and it's fitted it's the toilet fits nicely and that is all provision for this bathroom then immediately after that i go and start preparing especially if it's in the morning and i want to leave the house i've done an arch no door here but the framework to just trim the opening has been done properly and as i told you it's more or less the same concept Basically, maybe the shape or the size of the spaces are the ones that are different, but our cabinets are all spray painted. Then we have provisions for the chrome pipe. That is where you can hang your clothes. Provision for drawers. And in this case, we have three drawers all the way to the lower level before you reach the skirting. Then the same compartment repeats itself. Then I have provided also more uh, shelvings. This is a compartment that comes all the way from the floor all the way to the top. And this is specifically for the foldables. If you have your shirts and you have a duvet and you have your, 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 your sheets, you can fold them there nicely. Then the corner cabinet, I have the chrome pipes on the higher on the on the top level and in the middle level so that I can hang my clothes or my shirts here and hang other ones on the lower level. And as I do my return, that is where the L shape turns. I have another compartment for daily use or quick use. This is compartment for the hanging clothes and more compartments for either my boxers or my panties or my whatever my belts under here and this is slightly bigger so that you can use it on a daily basis and the trimming on the higher level as usual will trim the ceiling will trim the cabinet 
so that they are not touching each other. We we'll trim the floor so that the skirting, the, the cabinet is not seated on the floor. And that is it for this room. Probably let me show you one of the balconies. When I was when I came in, this balcony did not exist. So we had to customize and during the customization we, we noticed that that level, if left like that, water will flow all the way to this side. So we had to create a slightly higher level and then drop down. And in that case, so we had to compromise on the floor. So I created a step. As you go outside, you open. Right now it's locked. But uh, this is a balcony that we created. We also created this bal. We also uh, customized these doors in all the bedrooms on the upper level on the on the first floor. So this is a very nice security feature that we did. Very strong chumas to create a door for this, and they are all they are normal. They actually. Two, two swing doors plus one fixed panel, no, two fixed panels. That is a fixed panel on either side, that is on the left side and the right side, and swing doors of 900, 900 in the middle. And all these have uh, panels inside of glass so that during the day you can have natural light flowing into the room. And this has been catered from wall almost almost from end to end so that you can have natural light and maybe even aeration. So during the day you can open up, come and sit on that balcony and even look into the bedroom. Or if you're seated in the bedroom, you can comfortably see outside. And that is it for this particular building or this particular project. We've done this in all the bedroom. I'll give you shots. Some bedroom, the treatment is different in terms of wall finishes, in terms of cabinetry, but you will see, but I will not explain in detail. And for this reason, guys, thank you so much for taking your time to just watch our episodes. Stay tuned. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe now. And as usual, at Keith Interiors, where style meets elegance.